Hello, my name is Harold. This is Tech on Tech. And today we're going to do an extended version of how to install Windows 10. So let's go ahead and let's get right onto it. To start out with, I've got a computer here. This is the one I'm actually going to reformat and reinstall. Um, if your computer doesn't work, you'll have to use another computer. You basically need a Windows 10 or Windows 7 or Windows 10 computer, sorry, or Windows 11 computer, or basically just an alternate computer to be able to download and set up the USB thumb drive that we're gonna need to be able to do this. So let me switch over to this real quick and show you what we've got. This is the computer we're gonna be resetting today. It's a small form factor one. And right off the top, what you wanna know is that's just a standard small mini computer just like the one you probably have just smaller and what i have here is a thumb drive we basically need at least a 32 gig thumb drive the bigger the drive the better the faster the drive the better and i'm plugging it into the port here that's blue you don't have to but blue ports typically um basically mean that it's a usb 3.0 or higher port and the faster the port the better it will just install better and lens or sorry, it won't install better, but it'll install faster. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug this USB drive into this USB port. Just like so. Let's set that down and we're going to come back over to the computer here. All right, drive is detected. Now what we need is a copy of the ISO or a copy of the Windows 10 image to be able to do the install so what we're going to do is type down or go to a search window here and just type uh download windows 10. in fact i'll show you that from uh google because that's the one that most people tend to have and most people tend to use so here's google we're gonna go download windows 10 right here and should be the first link that comes up here. Download Windows 10 disk image file. We're going to click on that. Now, there's a couple of different ways to do this, but either of those methods are going to require this Windows 10 installation media. So I'm going to click download now. And what this is going to do is this is going to download the program we need to create this installation media. So let's give that just a second. Now, while we're loading this, because I'm going to left click on this and I'm going to open this program, we can create an ISO file, which we can then store on the computer. I'm going to left click yes here. And then we can store it on the computer and then use a program like Rufus to burn it to the media. Maybe, maybe I'll do both. It depends on how things go. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast track this and just have this install it right to the media now we kind of want to know for reference purposes what the name of the drive is and even more than that it's even even better if we can right click on it left click on properties and see who the vendor of the drive is let's see if it's got it here or if i got to go into here we go all right, this is a vendor co product code USB drive. There are reasons why you want to know what the uh, name of the manufacturer is who built the thumb drive, and I'll show you those later. But just take note, this is a vendor co product code USB device. So I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to shrink this. This process will delete everything that is on the thumb drive. So you will typically want to make sure that the thumb drive doesn't have anything on it, 32 gigabytes. Um, the faster the drive, the better, and the faster the plug you plug it into, the better also. Now, it looks like we're giving this a second to build that. Let's see, I guess while I am doing that, this is not the method we're going to use, but there is another method where we can download a file. It's called an ISO. And from there, you can download a program called Rufus, which I'll just go ahead and download and show you. This is the uh, alternate method in case you have any problems with this. We'll go ahead and search for Rufus. We'll click on Rufus Downloads. And just for the fun of it, we'll go ahead and we'll download Rufus too. It looks like that Windows 10 setup is still getting stuff ready, so we'll wait for that. 3.21, I'm going to go ahead and left click on that. Should, let me left click on Close This Ad. 
and it looks like it's downloading excellent now we are waiting for that to load there must be a bunch of updates and stuff in the background that it needs to download so let's let that do that i'm going to double click on downloads here you can also additionally get to this by left clicking on explorer here and then left clicking on downloads if you have a problem figuring out where that is i'm going to go ahead and double click to open rufus this is the alternate method i'll go ahead and open it do you want to check for updates yeah i'm going to let that check for updates and then we won't need this just yet but once we have the uh once we get to the step here uh you'll see where this program will come in use all right uh i'm going to go ahead and accept we'll give this a few more seconds in fact i will probably pause this so you don't have to wait okay we have two options here we can upgrade this pc now the reason you would do this is if you have a windows 7 computer and you want to upgrade it to windows 10 so you would select that option and click next and follow those steps the one i'm going to do is create the installation media here which is the usb uh, flash drive i'm doing i'm going to go ahead and click next all right you can generally just leave this the way it is if you were storing it for various reasons you would uncheck this box and then select maybe the 32-bit image iso or something like that um, i think in some cases i've had to do that for certain small form factor machines but for this we'll go ahead and leave it and you can probably do the same all right now here we have two options the one we're going to do today is going to be this option right here i'm going to left click this i'm going to click next and on the next screen which you'll see here in a second it's going to let us basically create the drive for installing windows 10 and it'll do all the work for us of putting it on the drive and getting the usb drive ready i'm actually going to show you what happens if i download the iso but for now let's get this one going let's leave usb flash drive checked and then this is the d drive we already know that this is the thumb drive it appeared the second that we plugged it in uh same thing as before if you're not sure you can go to this pc it will actually pop up or it'll appear under this pc here uh this d drive right here uh appeared when we plugged in the thumb drive and so we know that this drive right here is the thumb drive and usb esd usb d colon let's go back over here and look at that it matches so we know for sure this is the thumb drive so we're going to go ahead and click next now, at this point, the regular installer here is going to do this whole process for us. It's going to download Windows 10. It's going to format the drive, removing everything on it, and it's going to put Windows 10 on the USB thumb drive. So we are going to let that go. Although, while that's going, I'm going to switch over here for a second, and I want to show you the alternate method to do this using a Windows ISO file. So let me go ahead and get that for you okay let's come over here that is still downloading and doing its thing we have a new drive here that i want to go ahead and double click on and here we have the windows iso when you have that download the windows iso you're going to have a file like this that'll typically get downloaded to windows here and then what we're going to do is it's the alternate method is we're going to open rufus here we'll double left click on it we'll go ahead and left click again on yes once again you don't have to do this uh if you're following along with this method here so just keep following along with this but i want to show you this method just in case you need to or if you need an alternate method so this is rufus it already knows the usb thumb drive esd usb d colon that's the drive you would set up it wants us to select the image which is the file that was downloaded the ISO image and we're going to go over here and get the image in your case it would be in downloads in my case today it's going to be here and as you can see it'll be windows.iso or windows and then you click start there's some more there, there's some more more advanced things that you can do with windows 11 um, I was looking for that here but it doesn't seem to do it see what happens if i click start oh yeah here we go okay this is the reason why you might want to use rufus to create one of these windows install thumb drives 
Windows now requires on Windows 11, and don't quote me on Windows 10, we'll find out when we get to that step, that you have to log in online and use a Outlook or Hotmail account or something like that to get into Windows. In this case, we can actually, by checking these boxes, we can create a USB thumb drive that does not require that login to the internet to log in with an email account. It will bypass that and let you go straight to Windows with a local account. And there are a lot of reasons why this would be a good thing. Um, a local account with the name Dell would be better than having to log in with your Hotmail or Outlook username and password, uh, especially if you don't have one. Uh, but yeah, you can create that. When you're done, you just click OK, and it will do the same thing that this program is doing but it'll be a modified version that doesn't require a connection to the internet. So we're not gonna use this. I'm gonna log in on a Outlook account when we get to that step, but you can create one that bypasses this uh, if I click OK, but I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this. Um, definitely not what I wanna do today. I wanna show you the vanilla process that everyone uses. Now this is going to take some time. Uh, it's gonna go zero to 100 for the process, it's got to download the file. It's a big file, it's like six gigabytes. Uh, depending on your connection, this can take upwards of an hour. In addition to that, it also has to copy, well, it has to format it and copy it over. This process will take some time. Luckily, on the video here, I can pause this step while we wait for it, so you won't have to wait. I will check back in with you as soon as that gets to 100%, and then I'll show you the next thing we're gonna do. All right, just checking in here a little in between doing other parts of the video and other stuff, 17%. I thought I'd throw a little joke in there that I came across. Why was the math book sad? Because it had too many problems. All right, still waiting. Still waiting for this to install. I will check back in a second. All right, it's been about 45 minutes here. I'm checking back in on this download or installed, it looks like it is still in progress. And it looks like if it did format it, it is still in the process of working on it. So I will continue to wait and check back in a second. We're at 98%. We're gonna give this just a few seconds to see what this does. Yeah, I forget if it starts loading the USB or if, it, if it's finished at 100%. All right. After it got to 99%, it switched over to this screen where it's verifying the download. It's still got to go through the process of creating the thumb drive, but I'm still tracking this. I want to give you the steps as they happen because being thorough is one of the best things to do in a video like this. So right now it's verifying the download and we're going to let that continue. All right, as it continues, it's now actually in the process of creating the USB drive. I should note that at this point, this has probably been going for about an hour and 25 minutes. Um, I'm going to say approximately because I didn't note the time before I did this, but the second part of the process after it actually downloads, the image is going to go considerably faster. So I don't expect this to take much longer from this point. So let's go ahead and give it a few seconds. Then we're going to start the process of resetting the computer and starting the reformat. Actually, we're going to take a second. Let's go ahead and let's let that run in the background. There's something I need to show you in regards to the next step on this. Now, this is a Dell computer. So when we restart this, we need to tell the computer to load from the USB drive. Normally it doesn't do this. It loads to an internal drive that the operating system or Windows is installed on. Usually it goes straight to that for time savings and most drives or most, sorry, most computers aren't set up to do that automatically. So we need to bypass that and we need to go in and tell it to load from the USB drive. Now, in order to do that, we're gonna restart the computer and then we need to start tapping a key. Now there are different keys for different kinds of computer like Dell or HP and stuff like that. For instance, this will be uh, the key to enter the Dell boot menu since we are booting to the USB drive. And according to my Bing search, uh, it is either F2 or the F12 key on the keyboard. Let's take a look and uh, see what 
an HP key is, what is the key to bring up the boot menu on a HP computer? I should note that Google can technically do this too, so... Now this is actually a pretty generic thing. It says press the HP BIOS key to enter the boot menu. Um, actually, it's F10. In fact, I'll just tell you right now, most computers are either F2, F8, F10, F12, or sometimes delete. But you've got to be especially careful for F2 and delete because it can also bring you into what's called the computer's BIOS. I will show you that when we restart the computer, and you don't want to change anything in the BIOS because you can break the computer. So we're not going to go into the BIOS. We want just the straight menu. I'm going to show you the difference when we get to the restart. But let's go to uh, google.com and let's try that same uh, question again. In fact, I also want to note that some computers don't have a boot menu. You do have to go in the BIOS and manually change a setting inside the BIOS to tell it to boot to the USB drive first. Um, I may show you that also, but let me go ahead and redo this question. HP boot menu key. In fact, actually use this. Yes, yeah, here we go. Turn on or restart the HP computer. Press escape or F9 to immediately boot into the boot menu. Uh, it'll, be F it'll be escape or F9. Um, just take your specific computer, just put either Dell or HP or, um, heaven forbid, Gateway at the beginning of this. Uh, F12 is apparently Gateways. Let's see, what's another one that's, uh, yeah, probably, uh, Toshiba. Toshiba. Boot menu key, that's the F12 key. Or if you're really rich... Jitsu, boot menu key, F12, and all of these will bring up a menu. I will show you what that menu looks like after we uh, do the restart on this computer. I will probably also show you the BIOS too, because some custom-built computers, like ones that you build, and some higher-end machines, you have to go into the BIOS. I'll show you what that looks like, and I'll show you what you have to do. This is specifically a Dell computer, so it'll be F2 or, I guess that F10. It'll be one of those, and I'll show you that after the restart. But we do need to know that for the next step, and it looks like it is now physically creating the media. That's where it reformats the drive and puts the information on there. So let's let that continue, and then I'm going to check back in with this in just a minute after it's done with this step. And then it'll be time for the restart and the time to uh, put it back on there. All right, this looks like it's almost up to 99% again. Let's give this just a second and see what it does. If I'm looking in the background, it doesn't look like the USB drive has anything on it at this point. So I'm thinking it's going to actually have to copy the contents on there. Let's see what it does when it hits 100%. I don't believe it's copied the stuff to it yet. So I think it's got one more step. All right, I've reached 99% for the second time. Let's see if it's finished. As I said, I don't think it is because there is nothing on the thumb drive yet. Oh, nope, says it's finished. Probably hasn't refreshed yet. All right, now it wants to clean up. I'm just going to let you run in the background. I'm going to go into the thumb drive and look and see. Yep. All right, we have all the files on here. It is ready to go. Okay, now it refreshes. All right, we have everything on the thumb drive that we need now to start the reformat. This computer that I'm on is the one I'm going to reformat. But in the case that you just created this on another computer, I'm going to show you now. What you're going to have to do is, once this drive is ready, you're going to take this thumb drive out of the computer you created it on, and you're going to put it in the computer that you're going to install it on. So in this case, I'm installing it on this computer, so I'm going to go ahead and put it back in here. Uh, I'm also additionally going to make sure that there's no other drives plugged into it, and if you have a second drive that you don't want it installed on, I recommend you unplug that drive now, because it can be really, really easy to install Windows on a drive you don't want. And it's really easy to wipe out your data drive or something like that. So that looks like it's ready to go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to initiate the reset on here. So let's go ahead and restart the computer. Let's see, what did it say? It was F2 or F12. Let's try, uh, let's try tapping F12 
over and over again. And let's see if that brings us into the boot menu. I would have thought it would have been F10 too, but probably it's probably F12 on that. All right, the device is powered off. Should be powering back on right now. I'm already tapping the F12 key. Even before I turn it on, I am already tapping the F12 key. Uh, it looks like F12... Can't tell if it's booting to it yet. All right, so funny story. It turns out that I am unable to get into the boot menu on this particular system. So we're going to bypass this and go right into the BIOS and set the USB drive manually. To do that, I'm going to start tapping delete over and over again. Should load me right into the BIOS. Now, normally you would just have a boot menu. And from there, you would select, in fact, I'm going to have to I've got to set something up over here in the background for this because otherwise I won't be able to show you it. Sorry for that. All right, so normally you'd be able to go directly into a boot menu and it would look something like this. You probably can't see my key, but you can see the little blinking, uh, the blinking windows there. The one that's blinking now is what you would usually see. Uh, and then from here, you would select something like USB NIC, or in our case, it would say USB product on uh, the name of the boot drive that we pulled up earlier, the name of the or the name of the device or manufacturer. In this case, for some reason, it didn't do this like it was supposed to. So I'm actually going to have to go straight into the BIOS and do this manually. All right, let me go ahead. Now, if you're not familiar with the BIOS, this is how you set everything up on the computer. I would leave everything else the same as long as everything is working okay. I'm going to use the right arrow, right arrow, right arrow, right arrow to go to boot priority right here. I'm going to use the up and down arrow to highlight the one I want to use. Down on the bottom of the screen, you'll see you've got to use plus and minus to change the values. So I'm going to take this USB hard disk drive vendor co product code, which is actually the USB drive. I'm going to use plus to bring it up to number one. And now the boot priority says load to the USB drive first. I'm going to use right arrow to go to exit. I'm going to press enter to save and I'm going to press enter again so that it will restart the computer and then boot directly to the USB drive. Now, while it's doing that, I wanted to go into the boot menu like I showed you. Uh, this didn't seem to have one, so I'm setting the USB to boot manually. Uh, it is noted that if you do it this way, you will probably have to go back in after a certain point in the setup and then disable it or change it back. I will make a note of that and then tell you when it gets to that step so you know to go back. Uh, you could also technically remove the USB drive, but barring the uh, USB drive removal, yeah, you really ought to go back and you really ought to change that back. Or, you know, you can remove the USB drive too. It would do the same thing. All right. Right now we're waiting for the computer to boot up. It's going to start booting from the USB drive. I don't know if you can see it here, but if you look at the uh, USB thumb drive right here, it's blinking like crazy. So it is trying to load it. So I'm going to give that a second for that to load. All right, this is looking pretty good. It looks like it's loading from the USB. So if it loads correctly, you will see this screen right here. In fact, in a second, we should see a bar or a circle that starts to go around and around. Yep, there it is. All right, we're going to give it just a second to load into the USB drive now. And here we are. All right. The next thing we're going to do here is we're inside the USB drive or Windows 10 installation. I'm going to click Next. I'm going to left click on install now. We're going to give this just a second to load this. All right. 
Now, right off the top, I'm going to go ahead and left click. I do not have the product key. If you do have the product key, because you may have a sticker on your computer that will have the serial number on it, go ahead and enter that product ID from the sticker now. Otherwise, what will generally happen is, is if you previously had Windows 10 on there, it will download the serial key when you connect to the internet and activate Windows, or it will install the, the uh, it'll install the product key when you enter in your email address and password, which is what happens with mine, is my uh, product key is actually built into my Outlook account. So it'll either Outlook account download it, you'll enter it now or enter it later from the sticker, or it'll activate it when it verifies the hardware and connects to the internet. In this case, I'm gonna click, I don't have a product key and I'm gonna let it do that later. Uh, you'll want to use the same version that you had previously if it brings up this list. In fact, in this case, it will. Uh, in this case, it also technically had Windows 10 Pro previously. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select that one and click Next. Now, the next step is going to be the hard drive partitioning. And hopefully you don't have anything on the drive as you do this, because we're actually going to delete everything. So I'm going to check this box. I'm going to left click next. I'm going to go ahead and left click custom install. The upgrade is if you had like Windows 7 on there previously and you wanted to upgrade that installation, but we're going to go ahead and go to custom. Now I'm going to delete everything on the drive here. So I'm going to delete every partition possible by left clicking on the partition and clicking delete and then left clicking. Okay. If it's already good, and you try to highlight it, it won't let you delete it. So just move through these, delete, okay, delete, okay. And yeah, once again, this is deleting everything on the computer. So just note that. Now we have all unallocated, unused space. That is absolutely perfect. I'm gonna left click on next and that will get the process going. All right, at this point, it's gonna go through the install, copying Windows files, getting files ready for installation. So I'm going to let it go ahead and go through this process. And then I'll check back with you here in just a second. All right. We're just waiting for this to continue through the installation. It's just going to drop through these three here. It'll go through installing features, installing updates. Once it gets to the step of finishing up, I will check back up with you and I'll let you know. All right, at this point it has restarted, so we're just gonna give it a minute to load back up. We'll give that just a minute there and we'll go from there. All right, still in the process of loading, I'm presented with this getting ready followed by a bar that's going around and around and around. There isn't anything that needs to be done at this point, so we're just waiting for it to get to the next screen that we do need to do something. So we're waiting for that one. And for that, we'll just wait for it to change and load up. But so far, so good. All right, looks like the next screen is loading up. That would be a restart. All right, it's gonna load back into the installation automatically. Oh yeah, that also reminds me. In fact, I should have said this earlier because at about this point, you're probably going to notice it if this happens to be a problem. At this point, if you load back into the thumb drive, then, well, you technically, the installation when it gets to a certain point is going to restart. And if you've told it to load from the thumb drive first, it's going to try to reload back into that thumb drive. So if by any chance it loads back into that installation, where it says, uh, you know, it starts the installation over again, where you got to click next and accept the disclaimer and stuff like that. Uh, no problem. And at this point, or at this point, all you got to do is just hold down the power button until it powers off, remove the thumb drive, and then power it back on. It's already copied over all the files and everything it needs to set up. So you're completely good at this point. And this, I should also note, is the reason why I prefer to use the boot menu because the boot menu only temporarily tells it to load from the USB drive. If you change it in the BIOS and make it permanent to load from the boot drive or the USB drive, then it will continue to keep doing that over and over again as, the, as long as the boot drive or the USB drive is in there. 
So just a quick note on that. If you did run into that problem, it's simple. Just remove the USB drive and then physically power the computer off and power it back on. And also additionally, to properly fix that, you go into the BIOS and change the boot sequence back so it loads from the Windows Operating System Manager or the hard drive that is not the USB or the one that was originally set there in the first place. All right, I'm going to click yes for the United States. Installation looks like it's good. I'm surprised it didn't try to boot from the USB drive again, but there actually may be something built into the uh, installer now. So you may not run into this problem at all if they fix that, but that's okay. I'm going to click yes for the US because that's where I'm located. I'm going to click skip because I don't have a second language and I don't live outside of the US territories. I'll give that a second, saying just a moment. It occurs to me I'm going to need the username and password for the Outlook email that I'm going to do. Uh, same thing if you created the thumb drive and you check those, if you created the USB drive with Rufus and the ISO, it's not going to do this. It'll bypass all this. But because I created a vanilla one, that is a perfect factory replica, it's going to ask me for my, uh, for my email and password. I should also note that on my on my main computer, my license key for my Windows 10 is actually tied to my Outlook account uh, username and password. So it's like blank 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 at hotmail.com. Well, my license is actually attached to that now. So I enter that in and then it activates the license on the operating system. Uh, Otherwise, what it does is when the original operating system was installed, it attached the license to the hardware. And as long as you don't change the hardware, it will automatically license itself again when it connects to the internet and unlock it. If you don't license it, it will just lock out a couple of features. And to be honest, you can keep using it. So, you know, there's that. All right, we're still working. Luckily, we're getting toward the end of this plus or minus 10 or 15 minutes oh, please don't turn off your device it occurs to me that this is also already connected to the internet and your installation by about this point may pop up and it may ask you to connect to your wireless network um, i would say go ahead and do that or as an alternative if you don't connect to a wireless network. You can still create a local account for you to log into the computer. So if you don't connect or you click cancel or skip, you can just create a local account, but it's really going to want you to be connected to the internet. And it's really going to want you to sign into that email address. So more than likely right now, what it's doing, because this is taking a minute, in fact, I can verify this on my side. Um, let me see. Mm, doesn't look like there's any internet traffic going through it, so it's not running updates or anything. It could if it wanted to, but it does not look like it's running updates right now. So we're going to give that a minute to do its thing. Okay, it must have downloaded something irregardless because it wants to go ahead and restart again. Yeah, none of this will occur if you bypassed all this. In fact, I'm not even sure that it would do a restart if you bypassed all this. Also, I would love to create a video on every iteration of this, but there's 10,000 things this can do. So I'm just sticking with the vanilla option on this. What it will look like if you do it the way that Microsoft believes that it should be done. All right, it looks like it's loading back in. Now, it is already connected to the internet. So I'm thinking this is going to go right into asking me to log in. Okay, so it's got a few more minutes of this. All right, let's wait a several minutes, or let's wait several minutes, and then let's, uh, let's see what it does. All right, now we've got a couple of options here. 
Uh, if you're a member of an organization like a college or a large company or something like that, you would use the organization. If you're everybody else, like what I'm doing right here, you're going to left click on setup for personal use, left click and left click on next. Give it just a second because I believe this is about the point where it's going to ask me for my email. All right. Give me a second and let me grab that. I thought I had it up, but I guess I don't. Tech on tech official at outlook.com and next and my password for that one i don't believe it's going to show it on the screen so i don't believe i have to uh bleep that out although it does help if i enter the right password all right now i heard that on windows 11 they're going to be prohibiting use unless you enter that in luckily bypasses are being created including the rufus iso where you can just check those boxes and then it won't even ask you it'll just bypass this thing all together and go straight in uh, i'm going to go ahead i'm going to create a pin as i said i want to make this look as vanilla as possible I should also note that it may look a little different if you're like if you like did this as a factory reset or something like that uh some built-in password reformat manager or something like that for some large company like dell or hp this may also look a little bit different but fundamentally it should all look about like this all right we're going to give it a second to do its thing it also may take longer if it's connected to the internet. In some cases, it wants to download updates, so we'll wait for that. All right, this is all right. This is the next screen we have. Um, I'm just going to leave everything uh, tailored. This thing's probably going to get reformatted and reinstalled again at some point, so I'm not going to bother not doing any of this. If you if you're not otherwise sure, then your best bet is just to leave it as is. If you do know what that stuff is, well. You'll probably know that you want it disabled and you'll take care of it. In fact, we should be down to the wire on this. Okay. Looks like it was going to run a reset, but that may have just been it initializing the video card driver. Now's a good time to tell you about drivers, by the way. In some cases, your computer may need drivers. Uh, but there's a big, a big asterisk sign because the truth is by about this point with windows 10 and windows 11 microsoft has all the drivers and more than likely if it doesn't have the driver now if you set your computer not to go to sleep and you let it run it will install those drivers automatically and you won't ha even have to do anything as long as you're connected to the internet now in some cases you will need drivers in which case you need to go to the manufacturer website like support.dell.com or support.hp.com and download them typical items that need drivers may be the sound of the internet although hopefully not most network and wireless drivers are pre-included because they really want you to connect to the internet uh, video drivers in particular ones that you would want to download off of nvidia or ati's website so that you have the latest one because usually newer drivers have better performance so those are some possible things you'll want to do uh go download your video drivers but i should add that for those of you who are not sure it's kind of unlikely that you'll be needing those drivers anyway and if you just let your computer sit there and run it is very likely that your computer will install most of what you need just by being connected to the internet anyway that's actually a pretty neat feature of windows 10 and windows 11 and it's something that Microsoft has been working out. It's a massive driver catalog. Um, I personally have had some experience where the better drivers are the ones on the manufacturer websites. So I'll go to like Asus.com for the motherboard and download the specific one for the sound card. And then NVIDIA for the video card. And I'll just do part by part install on that. But... Uh, as I said, if you leave it on, uh, most of the necessary ones will just automatically install anyway. Uh, no, I don't particularly want to use an Android phone for PC. A uh, little bit of an Easter egg for you. I did that, and the performance on my computer and or... Oh, no, it was my phone. 
this did this really crazy thing. I'm going to go ahead and decline Office 365. Um, I'm not a big fan of trials, so I'm going to decline it. There was an option to enter the product key if you have a paid version of Office 365. I don't, so I'm going to decline. Um, I don't want another 100 gigs of data or data storage for OneDrive because that costs money. Um, I might cover that in a second, but for now I'm going to decline. Uh, I'm not particularly interested in Office 365. Use free Office apps instead. Uh, okay, I'll probably leave that one checkboxed. But basically, well, we'll probably leave it at that. Um, I'm not particularly interested in Game Pass. Um, I think I'm okay without that, so I'm going to select no thanks. Any of this stuff that you decline, you can re-add later if you need it. So, you know, when in doubt, just don't. Truthfully, I also you never use Cortana, but I'm going to go ahead and accept that one. Funny Easter egg for that one. Cortana is actually the AI from Halo and was specifically chosen for Windows because of its um, familiarity. And uh, let's see what's what I'm looking for. It's hype, notoriety from the Halo games. Well, I'll just I'll just I'll just say that uh, uh, Cortana comes from the Halo game, or the name of it does anyway. All right. At this point, we are just waiting for this to finish, which is good because this has definitely been a longer video. We should be just about at the point we're at the desktop, so we're gonna wait for the desktop. There might be a few things I'll show you on the desktop when we get to it but i believe we are almost done all right after it finished that last step it loaded us right into the desktop so let me be the first to say if you made it to this point congratulations we have successfully reinstalled but you should know there are a couple other things that we do gotta throw in here uh the first thing is drivers and programs, I recommend you install Chrome. I also additionally recommend that you leave the computer on so it can install the rest of the drivers. And we can do that by telling it not to go to sleep. So if you type sleep in here, and we go up over here to power and sleep by left clicking on it, we can tell the computer not to go to sleep anytime soon. And then we're gonna disable that. And the reason we're going to do that, also, it needs to be connected to the Internet for us to do this. So, and I am connected to the Internet. We, uh, we verified that earlier. And if you set up a wireless network, you're currently connected yourself. Uh, it wants me to click a few things to get into Window or into Edge Explorer. So I'm going to confirm and continue. I'm going to continue without this data. I'm going to confirm and start browsing. And I am indeed connected to the internet, which is good. I recommend downloading and installing Chrome. That's always good. Microsoft Edge is also a decent browser if you want to use that. As long as, a side note, as long as it's not a, doesn't go to sleep and turn off, it will just sit here and run updates and download any remaining drivers in the background. Or if you do know what you're doing, now is a good time to go to NVIDIA.com or ATI.com put in your video drivers but because this has already been a near hour long video i'm going to cut this one here if you do want to know how to install chrome i do have another video on how to do that i additionally am going to put a video at the end of this that uh, is more of an entertainment video if you're just tired and want to watch something more fun it's about the time i got scammed for seven thousand dollars on youtube it's an interesting video otherwise i'm going to leave you guys with that um I hope all this went really, really well for you. Uh, if you need to, there's Google and other stuff, or you can leave a comment below. I don't know that I will get to everybody's comment, uh, but I will tr totally try to do my best. Guys, have a great rest of the day, and have a good one.